Hey everybody, welcome back to Suzerain with Anton Rain and me, Super Paul Games. Uh, we've got a chance to go to a party with Vice President Pete, but before that, let's work our way through some of these reports. I read a report from the Ministry of Justice. The Ministry of Justice reports that the restructuring of the ministry has been completed with success after the increase of its budget. According to the report, a large portion of the budget was transferred specifically to solve the case backlog issues at lower courts, which has already helped ease the situation. Additional efforts will be directed at fighting corruption, upholding the integrity of judges, and the consolidation of the rule of law. Minister Morgna said that she intends to bring back trust in the ju justice system with more accessible and efficient courts. A public information campaign, and by rooting out corruption in society. Good news. Uh, what else we got here? Central Bank drafts economic recovery proposal. In an effort to mitigate economic damages, Holstered Central Bank is working on a new proposal. The plan compromises several measures, including the accumulation of foreign exchange reserves, the adoption of a cautious fiscal policy, and increased support for export-oriented businesses or industries. The bank's initiative forms a crucial part of a broader strategy to stabilize Swordland's economy. I am dubious any time a central bank is involved. And what do we got here in Bergia? Golcondis rally against Swordland. These are the religious extremists, supposedly. A recent religious rally by the Galcondis turned into a political demonstration against Swordland and its constitution. Well, the new, con the old constitution, the current constitution does suck. That's why we're trying to get a new one through. The rally, which was initially intended to be a peaceful gathering, quickly escalated into a protest against the Gal what the Galcondis see as an unjust and evil government. The sex leaders have been actively promoting these views to their followers who have been receptive to their message. The government is urged to monitor the activities of the Galcondis and take appropriate action to prevent further escalation of tensions and potential violence. They have a right to be unhappy. Look, I'm not supporting the Galcondis, but they have a right to say that the current um, constitution is not particularly fair, especially to Blues. Uh, what do we got? We got news in Wayland, in Vogsland, and down here in Karut. Chancellor Enos has publicly voiced support for Swordland's sovereignty amidst ongoing attempts by superpower alliances to exert influence. Kairut, with this long-standing policy of neutrality, underscores the value of independent decision-making for the Swordish nation and advocates for peace, stability, and non-interference in internal affairs. We can choose who we want to be friends with. It's not really your business, bro. And in Waylon... Wayland condemns Arcasian financial aid. Oh, they don't like that we're getting closer to Arcasia. President Spolak, and we're going to meet this guy soon, probably for trade talks, which I'm guessing aren't going to go good now. Condemns Sorlin for accepting financial aid from Arcasia. He said that cooperating with Arcasia will only bring trouble to the region and warned Sorlin for falling for the trap of the West's neo colonialist agenda. Smolak also blamed Arcasian President Dwight Walker for trying to dominate Eastern Macopa and exploit its resources. I don't think it's any of your business, Waylon. Go eat a dick. I can't say that, though, if we're trying to, you know, make a diplomatic deal with them. And then finally in Vogsland. Vogsland warns against Swordish privatization. Chancellor Emrich Hegel has voiced his concerns over the potential privatization measures being considered in Swordland. So, wait, he's basically saying we should be commies? Why am I wasting my time with this report? I got a party to go to at Pete's house. Not listen to some old shithead who, who it's none of his business how we run our country. Far from becoming accustomed to my workload as president, I only felt more and more snowed under as the weeks passed. It had been ages since I had any time to myself. I was starting to lose my focus, and my temper was growing increasingly thin. Peter was the first to realize I needed a break. After much cajoling, he finally persuaded me to come to a meeting of his new venture, Gentleman's Club. 
For the past few months, he has been hosting a salon of sorts, not just for politicians and businessmen, but also for artists, entertainers, people of taste. He told me with a smile on his face, Pete, should you be helping me get this constitution through? I mean, I know you are working on the diplomatic stuff with our neighbors. There was only one rule. No girls! No wives or girls allowed. Girlfriends allowed. Hence the name. Can I just go home and hang out with my wife? <laughs> Am I boring? I just want to go hang out with my wife, Pete. If my wife can't come, uh, that's a different problem. But if she can't be here, come on, man. And so I found myself in front of his new luxury villa and earlier... Why are the people, all the people in our cabinet buying fancy houses? Very loud jazz music. Ew! Emanated from inside. I definitely want to go home. I waited and waited. Finally, Peter opened the door. I could smell the whiskey on his breath. Anton, finally! Now the party can start! Come on in! As soon as I entered, Peter closed the door and turned towards the small crowd. Gentlemen, a minute of your time, if you please. I now have the privilege to present to you the man himself, the fourth president of Sorlin, Mr. Anton Rain. I'd known him for long enough to understand that he was more than a little drunk. He made an elaborate mock curtsy as I passed him and walked into the room. The music stopped and I felt everyone's eyes on me. And I present to you all Peter, the first alcoholic vice president of Swordland. Oh, my joke to the set. Well, with Peter knowing the crowd, there was a short, awkward silence before he continued. I want to be, like point to my crotch and be like, suck it, losers. That was hilarious. Losers. Uh, dear, dear members, please give a warm record to our very special guest. If I may, Anton, here, take this. He handed me a glass of whiskey and put his hand on my shoulder. We all know why we gather here tonight, to celebrate life, to have a brief escape from our tumultuous professions. Personally, I don't know any better cure for stress than a little drink. Yeah, what the fuck, I'll drink to that. The people in the crowd laughed and raised their glasses. That's about time you laugh, you fuckers! President, the president's funny! I can have you killed. Mr. Mustafeles! Oh man, I'm too busy to do that stuff. I'm high as a kite. Now, the tradition dictates that as the club president, I have to remind you of our house rules. There are three. No politics, no wives, and no one sober. <laughs> Cheers. Peter drank the whiskey in his glass in one go. I'm going to sip my whiskey and enjoy it. Anton Rain might have the power to make presidential decrees, but I, Peter Vectern, the president of this club, now declare this party started. Music, go! The band started up again. After gritting the crowd around me, I felt a hand on my shoulder. Quit touching me, everybody! Let me show you around, bro. We walked through the corridors of the mansion. Statues and paintings lined the stark white walls. An arched window provided a view of the neatly manicured grounds, complete with a swimming pool. A grand lesbian marble staircase led up to the second story. Peter gestured at the massive crystal chandelier hanging overhead. That chandelier was made in the 18th century. Can you believe it? There's even a hedge maze in the garden. How are you paying for all this, Peter? I'm afraid this might be a little ostentatious for what we're supposed to be doing. I'll, I'll let you in a, se in a secret. Gus Manger has a lot of contracts in real estate. He brokered an amazing price for me. Oh my god, Pete. Gus, uh, Pete, you do realize, like, like Gus is good at some things, right? He's helped us with rural development, I guess, in Grooney or whatever the fuck. But he is very much conflicted. He has a lot of conflicts of interest you have to be careful about. He'll also be here tonight, by the way. Oh yeah, Gus coming. I could say, oh, I can't wait to talk to him about investment opportunities. Investment opportunities for my zero monies? I ain't got no money. I don't know, Pete. Living, what did you promise him in return? Did you get us in trouble, Petey? Only my money. We continued walking until we circled back to where we had started. So, what do you think of my little hideaway? It's amazing, but I'd hardly call it a hideaway. It's more like a palace, dude. It definitely doesn't rival yours. I don't own it. It's part of like the presidential manor. 
Anyway, let's get back to the party. I arranged for some caviar to be brought in from Lesbia. You're going to love it. He opened the door to the main hall and we rejoined the other guests. The music was louder now and the mood decidedly more inebriated. The cocktail waitress waitresses. Wait, there's waitresses. I thought there were, I guess they're not girlfriends or wives. Oh, this is not. Ugh. Cocktail waitresses were carrying around plates of canapes. <laughs> I ain't educated. I don't know about that. Wearing dresses that left little to the imagination. Pete, I thought this was a gentleman's club, like dudes. Would you rather get served by wrinkly old man? Sweetheart, over here. It would be kind of interesting, I guess. He waved over at one of the waitresses, and she came over to us. She was in her mid-twenties, wearing red lipstick, her blonde hair neatly tied into a ponytail. On her plate were toast points, slathered in the lesbian caviar Peter had mentioned. That doesn't sound particularly good to me. I took a bite. It was rich, salty, tasting of pure seaside. I could almost hear the sound of the waves and the seagulls. Ah! Ah! Lesbian caviar. Best in the world, I'm telling you, Anton. There are few pleasures in life that are this. As the waitress left us to serve another attendee, she flashed a quick smile at Peter over her shoulder. He smiled back a little too broad. Oh my god, Pete. Oh my god, Pete. This does not seem good. A little too broadly, he smiled back. Sensual. You better not be talking to me, bro. I have not drunk enough for that. His eyes were still fixed on her with an expression I remember from our mini nights out together as students. Oh, look, there's Gus. Why, why don't you go talk to him? I'll be back in a minute. Peter, do not get in fucking trouble. Number one, you're my vice president, and that could be scandal. Number two, your wife is friends with my wife, and I'm not. I'm more scared of my wife being mad at me than I am at the na of the nation. Peter, I'm going to warn you right here. Don't make a fucking mistake. A mistake? What, what are you talking about? I'm just going to the washroom. See you shortly. He left the room, and I headed over to Gus. Gus Manger was standing next to a couple of men that I recognize as banking industry magnets. Please don't let Tusk be here. Please don't let Tusk be here. As I approached, all of them turned to me and bowed their heads. Mr. President, a toast to our new member, everyone. Gus and I clinked our glasses as the people around us raised theirs. I heard this mansion is a result of your connections, Gus. Oh, that's right. I do have a wide network in real estate. Peter told me a couple of weeks ago that you might be interested in potential opportunities such as, well, this... I am not, Gus. I am not. Even if I had money, I would not be. I ain't got no money. He opened his arms, gesturing at our opulent surroundings. Let's take a walk. The balcony has an amazing view of... Erlery, uh, the city nestled within the greater Holesword region. We left the room and made our way to the balcony. On the way, he took out two cigars and held out one for me. I don't want it. No thanks. I turned down the cigar, Gus lit up his own, and started smoking. We went out to the balcony. All of Erlery was at our feet. From this vantage point, I was able to see how expensive the building plot was. The swimming pool and the hedge mage were vis mage maze <laughs> were visible from here. Leaning over the railing, I admired the view for a moment before Gus spoke up. I know you're wondering about the deal Peter made. In a nutshell, thanks to my network, he was able to procure this house for half the asking price, which would have been impossible under other circumstances. I gotta get this guy out of my cabinet. Gus is just too much trouble. Um, I'm not going to say I want a similar arrangement. I'm not going to say that cheap. I'm just going to I'm just going to throw some cold water on this. You're wrong, Gus. I wasn't wondering. Uh, uh, very very well then. He downed his whiskey. If you excuse, excuse me now, I I will go refresh my drink. See you around. That's right, Gus. Why do you think you can still buy me off? Tusk tried it multiple times. Uh, shithead McFucker that you st that your business partners with. Who was it? Ewald. You know, I told him to go get wrecked too and he wanted money for Gassum. He left to rejoin the party. Alone on the balcony, I looked out over Erlery. 
Suddenly, I heard a rustling from the hedge maze below. I looked down and saw a silhouette. Two silhouettes, actually. So close together, they seemed to be entangled. Oh no, the maze was eating them! I squinted and tried to get a better look. Oh no, it was definitely two people kissing! Is it... Oh, please don't be Pete. But I couldn't see either of their faces. I returned to the party and spent some time mingling with the other guests. Engaging them in small talk about their businesses, their children, their relationships. I realized it had been a while since Peter left. I looked around and couldn't find him. Oh, instead I, my eyes landed on Ewald Alfonso. Oh, that douchebag's here too. Why didn't I stay home with my wife? With a reluctant look in his eyes, the former president walked over to meet me. At least I guess we feel the same way about each other. Mr. Fel Alfonso, I didn't know you were a member of Peter's Little Club. I'm not. Gus and I were having a business dinner, and he convinced me to come along afterwards. Yeah, we both got left. And I saw you speak speaking to Mr. Manger earlier. Um, let's see. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give Alfonso any information. Yeah, we talked outside. It's always nice to get to know one's ministers outside the Maroon Palace. I've given him as little to work with as possible. I'm not gonna admit that I told Gus to fuck off. Uh, we had a good chat back together in Mar Narble, as I recall. Did you? Alfonso, you ran away in a helicopter and didn't do anything I asked. Uh, before you turned down the opportunity to invest in gas on, that is. At any rate, it's doing fine without Swordland's input. A shame that only its international investors will benefit. Well, it worked out, and I'm glad to hear that. And you, you're going to benefit from this too, of course. Yeah, that goes without saying. Just then, Peter came up from behind and threw an arm around each of our shoulders. Uh, look at the two of you. Swordland's bright future and its ancient, ancient past. <laughs> oh, you gonna make the burn joke and I don't? When I said you're an alcoholic VP? My apologies, Mr. Alfonso. My vice president's had a bit too much to drink and he's an idiot. Uh, pardon me, Mr. President, but I've had exactly enough to drink. Well, Mr. Alfonso, have you been enjoying my hospitality? Alfonso smiled politely. Indeed I have, Mr. Vector. You've put, put together one hell of a gathering. If you excuse me, I'm going to have a quick word with the CEO of Swordish Petroleum. I think the fact that Ewald is leaving so quickly means he does not want to talk to Pete. Have fun mingling, Ewald. It was nice to see you. Alfonso gave a brusque wave and walked off. Yeah, I feel the same way, motherfucker. I feel the same way. Peter shifted his weight unsteadily. Eh, nice guy. Shitty president, but a nice guy. Was that you in the hedge maze, Pete? And please tell me you were kissing another man. And wait, 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 what are you talking about? While you were gone, I saw two people kissing in the hedge maze outside. <laughs> Yeah, uh, probably a couple of kitchen staff getting frisky with each other. What do I even pay them for? Peter, you know you can tell me anything. No, nah, you know, I'm not going to say that. All right, if you say so, Pete. I do say so. Now, who wants a drink? Besides me, of course. He poured us two large glasses of whiskey, and we drank them in one go. Throughout the party, we drank and drank, just like old times. I woke up the next day with a pounding headache and more than a few regrets. My recollections of the evening were hazy, but there was one important detail that just kept coming back to me. The red lipstick on Peter's collar! Oh, shit. Maybe my memory was playing tricks on me. Oh, fuck, Pete. What have you done? Oh no, there's nothing good is going to come out of that. Nothing good. If, if my vice president is having an affair, that's bad for the administration. That's bad for his wife. His wife's actually pretty nice. And that's, my wife's going to be furious. Eve, or Evelyn's Pete's wife. Uh, Anton's wife's not going to be mad or happy when she finds that shit out. Oh God, no. I don't want to deal with that. I think that's where we're going to end things. On that note, I, 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 I thought going to the party was going to be the good thing. It wasn't. Hope to see you next time.